Hi, I'm Chewy Fangirl. I fangirl over and you just listen. Okay, manager, what do you got for me this time? All right, Miss Fangirl. Well, first question. What are your hobbies? Well, I do enjoy singing sometimes. Hmm. Okay, and uh, what kind of TV shows do you like that involve singing? Well, besides reality TV, I did enjoy Glee. Until season three rolled around and really killed everything. Hmm, okay, okay. Well, let's just look at the list right here of the movies that we can review there in this category. Gosh, why is it so long? Oh yeah, we had to make you review every single movie that that dad with the glasses already reviewed because, you know, we're cheap. And besides, that nostalgia critic fellow, he's not really good at his job. I mean, seriously. It's like, hello, I'm the nostalgia critic. I remember it, so you don't have to. All this sort of crap. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, crap. You're not the girl who always sent that creepy fan fiction to his house, are you? Oh, yeah, I am. Due to unnecessary violence, we have replaced this scene with a pretty meadow. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Look, let me just uh, check the list again. <laughs> okay, uh, here's a movie that you can review. Um, okay. It's got a 7.1 stars on IMDb. Um, it's the most overrated film ever. Um, and to be honest, my teenager girl watches it and I want you to smash it. So what is it? It's... Pitch Perfect. No. <sighs> okay. There are three kinds of bad movies. One of them is laughably bad. Movies like the Mario Brothers movies. Movies where we were supposed to be taken seriously, but ended up in a really funny way. Then there's forgettably bad movies. Movies like Mean Girls 2, Legally Blondes. Movies we didn't like and forgot about. Unless somebody brought them up again. Then there's offensively bad movies. Like, that's my boy, because teacher and student relationships weren't offensive enough. Pitch Perfect, on the other hand, is a new kind of bad. It's boring, it's predictable. Now keep in mind this movie is so bad that I can't even remember the names of the characters, so I just made up my own names for everybody. The story starts off with a choir group called the Bellas, who are really bad. No, really. The girl who looks like Regina from Mean Girls literally peeks on stage in front of everyone. Everyone quits except for Ginger and then Regina. Three months later, we meet our protagonist, who is a cross between Bella Swan and Jade from Victorious. She goes to BDJU. What does that stand for? Bitches, Dicks, and Jerk University, he, because everyone in this movie is one. In fact, let's do a drinking game, shall we, about how many bitches, dicks, and jerks we can find. Um, <clears throat> actually, you're not supposed to be drinking on a job. Why not? Nostalgia Critic does it in his videos. Oh, first of all, you're under the age to be drinking, and um, secondly, don't you think that's getting a little bit too old? Here, try a counter instead. Isn't the counter just as repetitive? Shut up. You're just jealous because the alcohol you had was taken by your wife. Yes. Okay, we'll do a counter instead. Jade herself being a bitch, so already we won. Jade sees a guy who looks like Jimmy Fallon singing in the car. Keep this in mind because Jimmy's the love interest of the film. Gee, I wonder if Jimmy and Jade will end up together at the end of this movie. Well, you guessed correctly. Yeah, I thought so. Jimmy has a roommate who's a complete geek who likes magic. Jade's roommate is also a bitch who is Asian. And that's about it. Jade dreams about being a professional GJ and moved to LA. But her father, who is a jerk, crushes her hopes and dreams by saying that she has to get a college education first. And DJs are losers. Yeah, you know, because Skrillex isn't professional DJ, he lives in his parents' basement. Jade and the Asian girl go to an activities fair, where they see Regina and Ginger, who are also bitches, hopelessly trying to get the Bellas to reunite. 
Ginger wants Jade to join, but Regina thinks Jade is too alternative. Yeah, because Haley Williams and Amy Lee aren't successful at their careers. They're just goth kids that nobody likes. Besides the Bellas, there are three other acapella groups in this college. However, only the Bellas and another group called the Troublemakers are actually important. Jimmy and the Geek try out for the Troublemakers. However, all the people in the Troublemakers are a bunch of jerks. So, what number are we on exactly? My guess has to be... Mm, 11. Later, Jay goes to find a job in a record store where she meets Gordon or Ramsay, her boss. Yeah, I don't even need to say it. We know he's a dick. Jimmy also shows up, and Gordon gives the two of them the job of stacking CDs. Jimmy tries to flirt with Jade, but Jade doesn't like B-list comedians. Poor guy, he was the most likable character. Jade then goes to take a shower that night, while she is singing one of three songs that are constantly played through the whole entire film, that one being Titanium. Ginger hears this and doesn't ask, but harasses her to join the Bellas. Jade miserably accepts, which makes the Ginger happy. All four groups share an auditorium and audition at the same time, so the four groups have to pick which people they like. Unfortunately, only 20 people try out and most of them suck, and the people who are really bad are stuck with the Bellas, such as a slut, a mutie, fat Amy, and a lesbian. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to see this film is because I love Rebel Wilson's acting in Bridesmaids and what to expect when you're expecting. She's really funny. However... I was really disappointed with Fat Amy in this movie. She's kind of a loser, and she's anti-Semitic, and it's really not funny at all. Then we get to Jade, who is supposed to be the best singer in the whole show, because she must be a god or something. And what does Jade do? Pole dance? A strip tease? Belt out a Christian Aguilera? No, she plays the cup, because, you know, everyone does that nowadays. <laughs> La la la, la la la. Am I doing this right? Is this cool? Well, you look like a two year old playing uh, drums on the Mommy and Me class. But even if everyone sucked, they all got in somehow. The Bellas have some kind of cult following where they aren't allowed to have a relationship with any of the troublemakers because they're trouble, get it? It's a pun. This role gets two girls kicked out. Jade tries to say something to Regina. But she doesn't like her response. However, she knows that Jade is the best singer on the squad and can't really kick her out. Later, Jade and Jimmy go on a secret date where they can talk about movies. But Jade doesn't like the movies because she must be working for Al-Qaeda or something. Jimmy says he wants to do some musical scores and Jade laughs at him. Then we see all four groups have some sort of sing-off and Jade is the best singer there. But somehow get the team disqualified. Baby got them open all over town. After this mishap, Ginger announces that she has some kind of vocal like cancer and can't sing as well as she could before. At regionals, the Bellas sing the same exact song they sang at the beginning of the film but with much less vomit. Everyone is bored out of their minds, but somehow they win third place because that makes sense. The Troublemakers won first place but end up getting into a fight with another group. Jay goes in to step in but ends up getting arrested. Jimmy bails her out, but instead of thanking him or giving him a passionate kiss, she yells at him like a whiny three-year-old. After Jay's performance, this gets the respect out of Gordon, and she's now allowed to DJ at the record store. However, she has another performance, so she can't. At the next competition, the bell is singing the same exact song, but no one's really paying attention anymore. So Jay, the angel that she is, starts making a mashup with the third most overheard song in this movie, Bulletproof. The judges seem somewhat startled, however, Regina is angry and kicks Jade out. Jade goes to DJ at Gordon's record store and then watches the breakfast club and cries. The Bells win second place this time, however, Jimmy notices that there's something wrong with his team. One of the troublemakers is in high school and not in college. This ends up getting the team disqualified during the finals. The next day, the Bellas have a cat fight because everyone has turned on Regina because of her bitchiness and she pukes on command. Jade walks in and makes everyone love each other and makes everyone confess things that we already knew. However, Ginger says she can barely sing and all the girls are sad, but not for long. Regina lets Jade take over the Bellas and they practice outside since their practice room is covered in vomit. We then discover Ginger can now sing bass and this makes the team very happy. We also find out that the dick of Alita of the Troublemakers has gone on to bigger and better things. And 
Oh my god. Look at those gorgeous bodies. What? <sighs> Stick to the review, fangirl. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're almost done here. You're like nostalgia critic for crying out loud. These guys are not your type. You got that right. Shut up. Jimmy lets the geek join his team so the troublemakers can compete in the finals. Jimmy goes to apologize to Jimmy after multiple lash outs she had at him, but he doesn't accept her apology. Good job, Jimmy. You don't need her. At the finals, Jimmy tries to get Jimmy back by singing an ultimate mashup featuring Don't You Forget About Me from The Breakfast Club. Yeah, because if that's how you win someone's heart, I sure hope that someone sings Sail by AWOL Nation because that is my favorite song to win my heart. Who the hell are you? Oh, I'm here to stare at you, my love. What? This is how I show my love. Because I blame it on ADD baby. This is how I show an angel does. I blame it on my own sick pride. Seriously, who are you? Oh, um, uh, I'm the Nostalgia Kid. Yeah, now get off my show. Oh, come on, I got my piano and everything. So the Bellas win because Jade is a Mary Sue and we can all love her and she wins the heart of Jimmy and then they all live happily ever after. So that was pitch perfect. It was really annoying. It was boring not only because it was predictable, but the characters really didn't progress. They're all jerks and barely learned a thing. And even if Jade wasn't like this, I still wouldn't like this movie because it's just too perfect. It's too much like Glee without what the gays. If there was one good thing about this film, it was the Sacapellas. The one group competing against the Bellas who sang one of my favorite songs. Also, the climax of the film was really funny. However, the humor doesn't always make a story good. It's structure that makes a story good, and humor to emphasize what the story is. Now, if you excuse me, I'm about to put on a real performance. I feel like I've been locked up this century along the nest with someone. Me. You're looking at what the long this is my one, but God don't know I'm gonna give it away. Bang, 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 bang. Oh, my body's saying, let's go. Oh, but my heart is saying, no. If you wanna be with me. Baby, there's a price to pay. I'm a dream in a bottle. You gotta love me the right way. If you wanna be with me, I can make your wish come true. You gotta make a big impression. You gotta like what you do.